yes he is you may not feel him The morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm The morning is coming All you have to do Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm He's right there with you He's right there with you You can ride out your storm He promised to never leave you You never leave you. You can ride out your storm. Oh, praise God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. We want to magnify you, God, that you have given us strength. You have given us courage. You have given us wisdom and understanding to ride out our storm. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, let nothing be done of self, O oh God, but let everything be done of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch your people, God, those who are facing affliction those who are facing trouble god give them a problem solving strategy today god in the name of jesus whereby they can solve their problem oh god what they're undergoing oh god in the name of jesus mighty god i pray this morning that your holy angel oh god will minister life unto your people in the name of jesus oh god we pray for this radio station god we pray for our listeners oh god we pray for pastors we pray for friends we pray for government official oh god in the name of jesus i pray oh god that we will unite together oh god i pray that your spirit oh god will knit us together with god that cannot be broken oh god i pray this morning in the name of jesus it would not be a lip service but it would be a deed oh god an action put into practice oh god examine our activity today god in the name of jesus examine in the motive of our heart test oh god our heart test oh god in the name of jesus mighty god if there's anything in me god that is not like you god i ask you to wash me this morning wash me in your blood wash me god cleanse me god mighty god you said we are clean through the words oh god let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable oh god unto you and unto your people this morning oh god this morning for those who may have lost a loved one those who are in darkness those who have not yet come to know you god those who are confused god in the name of whatsoever the circumstances oh god we send healing water god let your healing water flow deep within them oh god in the name of jesus as they are inspired by your holy spirit oh god let inspiration flow right now in the name of of Jesus mighty God we pray oh God even for management and staff uh, oh God everyone that walked through this door God in the name of Jesus to minister life to your people God I command life oh God I come in the name of life oh God of Jesus Christ 
heart. Emmanuel, I cried out unto you, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God is with us. God has come down to be with us. God has come down to be with us, to abide, to tabernacle with us in the name of Jesus. Tabernacle with us now, God. Take up residency in our heart. I declare that the darkness now have gone and the light has come. I declare the verdict to the world this morning that darkness, oh God, has vanished away and the light has come to stay permanently in the name of Jesus. We pray and we call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. say very um, pleasant good morning to each and everyone out there where, whether way of internet radio cell phone good morning welcome to choice gospel network 92.9 fm this is your your surely bishop anderson um light of and please get your bible get your bible get your pen get your notebook because we are going to go into the word of god immediately amen get your pen get your notebook so you can write down the word of god so you you don't get um agitated or aggravated over the word of god the word of god come to be lamp unto your feet and light unto your path amen i want to go um to the book of jeremiah chapter 10 again i'm going to pick it up back from jeremiah chapter 10 where we left off monday evening glory to god and then i'm going to ask a question and i pray that you write the question down amen and in jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 23 and it said here is jeremiah praying 
Jeremiah Priors, right? And it said, I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. I want you to recognize it. I know, I know. He didn't feel, he didn't think, he didn't assume. He said, Lord, O oh Lord, I know that a man's life is not his own. It is not for a man to direct his steps. Watch the very next verse, verse 24 now, Jeremiah chapter 10 for those who just tune in. And the verse 24 say, correct me. That word correct me to discipline me, discipline me, O oh Lord but only with justice, not in thy anger, lest thou reduce me to nothing. Oh, glory to God. Listen to Jeremiah prayer. Jeremiah pray. Now, I would like for you to write this question down because many of us, we have trouble. We have problem. We face problem. We face trouble all day long. We, um, circumstances just challenge us and, and yes indeed I, I don't know of anyone who don't have any challenges uh, any circumstances but we all have circumstances we all have challenges in the name of Jesus amen and so so watch this carefully my question is today to you what are your problem solving strategy write that down what are your problem solving strategy as you're writing it personally you're going to ask what is my problem solving strategy what strategy am i going to use what method what procedure am i going to use to overcome my problems we all have problems we all have problems so i'm not speaking just to those who are listening by way of internet, radio, etc. No, no, I'm speaking even to myself. The truth is we all have problems. We all have circumstances. We all have situations that we're going through. So I want you to write this question down. What are or what is my problem solving strategy? What method, what procedure am I going to use to overcome my problem? And, and, and that can open up a whole ballpark, you know, and when you look back in your life and you say, man, you know, I did this, but um, I did it out of ignorance. I did this out of foolishness. I did this out of anger. You, you know, we can make a lot of correction. We can make a lot of correction. Remember, God can correct our life and God want to correct our life. So the year is Jeremiah said, correct me because he recognized that he was doing something wrong. Now it's not too many people recognize the thing that they're doing wrong because they have been doing this for such a long time. So so it seems right, you know, it seems righteous. It's feel good. It seems like this is the way. But it's not taking us the way we want to go. We are not getting the right result. Amen. Um let's go over to the book of of um, um, Matthew chapter 21. I want to look at Matthew chapter 21. I want to show you something. Um, there was some Pharisees and Sadducees and something Jesus did and it aggravated them. Oh my God, it aggravated them so much. Oh, glory to God. Uh, Matthew chapter 21. Ah, glory to God in the name of Jesus. Um, let's pick it up. Um, um, verse 12, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 12. Let's look at this now. And verse 12, Jesus entered the temple area, right? And devoured out all them that bind. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, that was 20. I'm looking at 21. I'm sorry, sorry. The wicked fitchy. Early in the morning. Yes. Um, let's look at verse 23. I'm sorry, verse 23. Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. Look at this. And, and it said, Jesus entered the temple court. And while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. They came to him, listen to their question. By what authority, by what authority are you doing these things? Listen to their question. What Jesus was doing was puzzling. It was puzzling to them. And they asked a question. What a profound question they asked. By what authority 
are you doing these things? They asked, and who gave you this authority? Now, I want you to listen to those words that they asked in Jesus. By what authority? And you have to ask yourself the question, by what authority are you doing what you're doing? By what authority? And who gave you that authority? Because I want you to understand that when you understand the institute authority of the kingdom of God, you see all authority has been instituted by Almighty God. All authority has been established by the power of Almighty God. We may not like how they operate. We may not like how they do things, for etc. For government, etc. You, you see, we may not like how they do things, but the Bible said all authority has been given to Jesus. All authority has been established. So my question is, what problem-solving strategy do you have to solve your problem? Because you know you're going to go through trials, you're going to go through tribulation, and sometimes it's only because we violate certain authority, certain rules, we have in such problem, and many of us don't see that. So they're asking the question, by what authority? Authority, are you doing this? And who gave you this authority? My question, my next question is, are you operating in the authority of the Almighty God? Are you operating in the authority of your feelings? Remember, the Bible warns us and the Bible encourages us and say, said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my spirit. Now, remember, we define what the spirit is according to John chapter 6 and verse um, 66, 63, it said there that the flesh count for nothing. The worldly wisdom count for nothing. That's what the word flesh means. The worldly wisdom, it count for nothing. It comes to nothing. But the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Glory to God. Somebody ought to praise God. God's word, they are spirit and they are life. So you need to understand by what authority we are operating by the authority of Almighty God through Christ Jesus. It is Jesus who give us authority. It is Jesus who established the authority in our heart that we would operate through his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when we operate and function from and active the authority and operator. If you notice, they were puzzled. These men were puzzled by the authority. They asked in Jesus, their question is authority. So watch this though. Jesus' authority was greater than man's authority because here is the priest, here is the elders of the people, the rulers, the government is coming to Jesus and asking, by what authority are you doing there? Things must be done by the authority of the Holy Spirit. When we do things by the authority of the Holy Spirit, we will get greater victory. Glory to God. Somebody ought to praise God. So if you're not operating in your God-given authority, if you're not operating in your God-given authority, let me say that again. Glory to God. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say, He has given me authority. God has given us authority. And we have to operate in such authority, in such power. Glory to God. And so watch this now. The institute, the institution and power of government. The institution and power of government. If you just consider, look at, look at the metamorphosis here. Watch it. If you just look at the institute, government and the power and the authority. Watch it now. Who does it benefit? And who does get the punishment? Those who violate it. Glory to God. Those who disobey it. And just like the power of Almighty God, when we disobey it, we pay a price. We, we suffer the consequences. We suffer punishment. But when we obey, when we obey, when we practice it, when we put it into practice, then we get the victory. We get the benefit. So these men were questioning the power and the authority. You have to understand that whatsoever we do, it must be done through the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So what is 
your problem solving strategy let's go back there and think for a second please i want you to ask yourself the question is the strategy that you're using is the method is the methodology is the method is the procedure that you're using is it working for you or is it creating more problem is it solving your problem because god is a solving problem god he wants to solve our problem God wants to solve our problem. And how does God solve man's problem? Well, remember Psalm 107 verse 19 and, and 20, what he said. They were in trouble and they cried out unto him. They cried out unto him. And he delivered them. He rescued them. He, watch this now. He sent his word. He sent his word to heal, to rescue, to save them. So you see, what is God problem solving strategy in your life? It's nothing but the wisdom of God. Man, we need the wisdom of God. If ever a time we need the wisdom or the word or the knowledge of God, now is the time, brethren, we need. Oh, glory to God. We need the knowledge. We need the wisdom. We need the understanding standing of the word of almighty God what are your problem solving strategy how are you going to resolve your problem now watch this now and I want you to follow me carefully here and I can speak about myself because I don't know anything about people glory to God but you know let me take my life back from my childhood days when I do something wrong from my childhood days and I know that I did it wrong. And I know that my parents was going to punish me. They were going to beat me. You know what I did? I come up with an excuse. I come up with a lie. I tell them lies. And that did not solve my problem. It only get me deeper into my trouble. Oh, glory to God. It get me deeper. So that was my way how to try to escape. Have you ever lied trying to escape out of a problem? Did it work? It may, you may get away with it for a second and you think it worked, but it never worked. Because you have to keep on lying. You got to go on, on, and on, and on lying, but it never solves your problem. You're going deeper in the pit. So what we need is the truth. Because it is only the truth that set men free. And now I know that many of us, even me sometimes, there are certain truth I just can't angle. I'm not ready for it. Glory to God. And so, but I'm working. I'm working to be mature. I'm working in the way, in the era that God's word will take totally effect upon my life. God's word would affect every era, every aspect of my life that I may come to the knowledge of the truth of God's word that it can solve my problem many problems that we have is because we continue to rehearse and recite those negative problems day by day we keep on practicing them but i come to tell somebody this morning through the power of the holy ghost that this is a day you are ready you are preparing yourself to get your problem solved we all have problem and in the book of james in the book of james chapter one I believe verse 3 it said there my brethren it's a counted as pure joy consider it as pure joy when your faith is tried oh, oh wait a minute when you your knowledge your faith is your knowledge your faith is your knowledge and so God has to make correction in our knowledge what is your faith Faith is not for you to think whatever you want to think. That's not faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Almighty God. That is your faith. And how do you increase your faith? To increase your faith, you must increase your listening skill to the word of God. You must read the word of God. You must surround yourself with the word of God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word is God this day. So what we need is the knowledge of God. He sent his word 
his word is a strategy to help you out of your circumstances. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 17 here for a minute. For those who have financial problem, let me show you something in the book of Proverbs chapter 17. Let me show you that wisdom is your only strategy out of darkness, out of poverty, out of sickness, out of bondage. Wisdom is our strategy. And not just any wisdom. I'm talking about the wisdom of Almighty God. In Proverbs chapter 17, open up your Bible, glory to God, and write it down because this is going to help you. You got to have strategy. How do you solve your problem? What is your problem solving strategy? What are the method? What are the procedure you are using to keep yourself out of bondage, to keep yourself out of darkness, to keep yourself out of poverty, to keep yourself away from sin? What are your plans? What are your strategy? Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. Glory to verse 16. Let's look at verse 16. Listen to the question that is asked. Of what use is money in the hands of a fool? Of what use is money in the hands of a fool since he had no desire to get wisdom? Wow. Wow, what a statement of what good is money in the hands of a fool since he have no desire to gain wisdom. Brethren, is it a, is it a money problem do we have? Is it money causing the problem in this world today? I don't think so. It's the wisdom that we're using. Foolish knowledge. The carnalized wisdom that we have been using is what caused money. Money in itself is have no, no problem. It's a person, it's the mindset, it's the language, it's the attitude, it's the behavior towards the money is the problem. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say today to glory to God because watch this now. It is not the money is causing the problem because the Bible says it's because of the love of money is what causes the problem. Money in itself don't love nobody. Oh glory to God. Money is just... um. A necessity in the hands of people to solve their problem, to their buying problem, whatsoever they want to buy. But it's our attitude towards that money. It's all we think, it's all we treat it. Of what good, of what good is money in the hands of a fool since he have no desire to gain wisdom? So what is the Bible saying to us here today? It said wisdom is better than money. Wisdom will teach you how to use money aright. Glory to God. So wisdom should be your first strategy. You need to get wisdom because in all you're getting, you need to get the principal thing. You need to get the wisdom. God, I need the wisdom. Somebody ought to lift their hands to glory. Somebody ought to lift their hands to heaven and say, God, I need the wisdom. I need your wisdom. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Guide me because those who are led by the wisdom of God, those who are led by the knowledge of God, those who are led by the understanding of God will be called and will become the sons of the Most High God. Our life, our life action must reflect the wisdom of God. Man, I'm in love with wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Now, let's go over to the book of Ecclesiastic. Let's look into the book of Ecclesiastic, chapter 9, I believe. Let me show you that your strategy, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hmm. When we look at wisdom, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11. I have seen something under the sun. The race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. Nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time 
and chance. Time and opportunity. Time and opportunity happen to all of us. What are you doing? How are you using your time? How are you using your time? What are you using your time to do? You see, many people spend time in front of TV, watching soap opera. Many of us spend time doing a lot of gossiping. Many of us spend time not educating ourselves in the word of God, in the wisdom of God, and expect things to change. No, my friend, things are not going to change. You must spend Spend time in the presence of the Lord uh, because the word of God declare in the presence of the Lord uh, there is fullness of joy and at his right and there are pledges there are benefits forevermore how are you spending your time how are you using your time because we have to give an account for our time here on earth what we do with our time by what authority are you using your time? How do you plan to solve your problem? How can I get my problem solved? And today many people are hurting today. And we are repeating the same old feel broken policy non-effective policy that strategy that's not working my friend the knowledge of god will work for you if you put the word of god to work it will work for you it will change your life he will deliver you out of darkness he will deliver you from sickness he will deliver you from poverty he will deliver you from heartaches and pain the word of god there is power in the word of god i come to remind somebody to remind you to read your bible as a little boy growing up i can hear my mother and my grandmother voice resonating inside of me read your bible pray every day and you will grow my friend how are you plan to grow many plan to grow in the wisdom of god while many are growing in the foolishness of this world but i come to remind you there is power in the wisdom of god there is joy in the power of god there is is light in the wisdom of God there is victory in the wisdom of God and what we need is the wisdom of God the Bible said wisdom is more profitable than any weapon of war glory to God what are your problem solving strategy many hear the word of God but never do it and if you never put the word of God into practice then your problem will never be solved because the words declare that he sent his word to solve your problem God have given us strategy oh God to gain the advantage oh God that we may have dominion in our environment I come to tell somebody this is the day that the Lord has made and we will be glad and rejoice in it in the name of Jesus to God be the glory great things he have done he have sent his word remember Jesus was the invisible word Jesus is the visible word he is the word that became flesh that manifests he was the type and shadow but today he is our reality Jesus the wisdom of Jesus is our strength it is our victory oh glory to God his wisdom is here to save his wisdom is here to deliver his wisdom is here to bless his wisdom is here to guide his wisdom is here to protect and I come to remind somebody this morning through the power invested in me that I'm in love with the wisdom of God yes I'm in love uh, with the wisdom of God uh, and the wisdom of God is calling out to all mankind oh God wisdom is standing at the street corner calling the simple say come I got great and precious things uh, to show you oh God I remember when I was in darkness I remember when I was in trouble oh glory to God it was the wisdom of God it was my willingness to be transformed oh glory to God I I come to tell somebody we need the wisdom of God to restore to God is to be restored to the word of God
God. That's why they say there was no other prophet greater than John the Baptist. Because if you notice John the Baptist's open statement, he said in the beginning, he's reconciling man back to the word of God. And yes, indeed, we have strayed so many times. But today, God wisdom is here to heal. God wisdom is here to deliver. God wisdom is here to set free. God wisdom is here to prosper you. If you're looking for a breakthrough, if you're looking for a deliverance, if you're looking for a healing, you need to look to the word of God. As the psalmist declare in Psalm 121, my God, I feel like preaching. And the Bible declare, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh, my help cometh. Glory to God. Let me show you that wisdom is the healing strategy that you need. There was a man, there was a Hebrew man by the name of Daniel. He got three friends by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Glory to God. And the king make a decree. And the king said, if I have a dream, and if you can't interpret my dream, I'm going to kill every wise man in Babylon. Oh, glory to God. And Daniel go to the king's main man and say, go tell the king give me till tomorrow oh glory to god give me till tomorrow i will tell him what he dream and that will save a lot of people's life and daniel called his friend him and he said brethren i want you to go down on your knees and see god how do i see god i cry out to god for strategy i cry out to god for answer and the bible said they pray they went in prayer i come to remind somebody that you got to remember Remember to pray and remember when you're praying you're asking God for help you're saying help me God I'm in a dilemma I'm in a dismal place here God I'm in the darkest place I'm in a rough place God but I need you to tell me what was the king dream is and the Bible said in the midnight hour I come to tell somebody this morning you may be in a dark place you may be in your midnight hour you may hint you may be in oppression you may in darkness but the wisdom of God will become light unto your feet and a light unto your path come on somebody we are to give God a prayer and in the midnight hour the Bible said God reveal to Daniel what was the problem and then that was a strategy that God gave him knowledge to go tell fear um King Nebuchadnezzar what he dream and that promote him I want to tell somebody this morning that God is ready to release his power he's ready to release his glory he's ready to release wisdom that will take you higher that will get you out of ignorance and bring you into wisdom we need the light of wisdom we need God wisdom to guide and to protect us oh glory to God it is not for a man to direct himself what we need is a divine direction from God he was God leading people by his wisdom I come to remind somebody the longer I serve him the sweeter he grow they call my life and your life must reflect the glory of Almighty God somebody ought to praise God today because he's sending his word do not take God word lightly do not take God word for granted God sent his word to heal you God sent his word to prosper you we are prosper by the wisdom of God not by the ignorance of this world my friend what is do you have a problem solving strategy many of us we hear the word and we just ignore it we just leave it right there no, you got to put it into practice. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24, Whosoever heareth these words of mine, whosoever heareth these saying of mine, these are God's saying. And he said, if you put them into practice, you'll be unto a wise builder. How are you building your life? How are you building your life strategy? How do you plan to overcome? See, many of us don't have no um, strategy. But guess what? God word. Let's look at Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs chapter 20. This will be my final Bible verse for today. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. 
Glory to God. I'm talking about problem solving strategy. Glory to God. How do we solve our problem? Because you know something? Many of us, we talk and we encourage and that's good. But people want their problem to be solved. People need their problem to be solved. I need my problem to be solved. I need somebody with the expertise. I need somebody with the solution to show me how. Glory to God. Somebody had to praise God this morning. Mm. Okay, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. Watch this now. Make plan by seeking advice. Make plan by seeking advice. If you wage war, you must obtain guidance. Watch this now. It, watch this now. There are some things that we didn't rage war over. Their sin is just automatic. But how do you plan to overcome? Because sin is a problem. Jesus Christ is the cure. The wisdom of God. Come on, somebody need to write that down. Remember what was the problem. The problem, sin is a problem. So what is the cure? What is the strategy? The wisdom of God. Jesus is the cure for our prancer. Jesus is what the world needs today. Everybody need Jesus today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember what is the problem. But what is the cure? Jesus is the cure. Jesus and not just a person but his wisdom is a cure when you take his saying when you take his counsel when you take his wisdom and put it into pra practice it will cure your problem god want to cure your problem my brothers god want to solve it so let us not be a hearer of the word but a doer also because to only hear the word and never put it into problem your problem will not solve it will not solve trust me it will not solve i've been there done that so many times and so my friend today think about what i'm saying here ask yourself what is my problem solving strategy how do i overcome the problem the challenges that i have daily how do i overcome it and then you're going to realize we need the wisdom of god this is what god sent his son jesus christ here to do to save us to rescue us to deliver from all our sin remember sin is the problem sin has always been the problem jesus christ is the only cure jesus christ may i say that somebody need to write that down sin has always been and will always be the problem in our life sin is to violate the authority are the command of Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the cure. You need to write that down. Because it's going to solve your problem. So we're not just worshiping Jesus in vain. Remember, your life must now reflect that you are teachable. You have a teachable spirit. He's correcting you. He's disciplining you. Which man have a child and don't discipline him? We need the cure. Let us pray. Father God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Emmanuel, in the name of Emmanuel, God is with us. We thank you for Emmanuel. We thank you for the cure. We thank you because Emmanuel came to cure all our sickness, all our disease. And I thank you that we receive him by faith. We receive his instruction by faith and put it into practice and it cure all our disease. You send your word to heal our diseases. And today, God, I pray for those who are sick. I pray for those who are in darkness. I pray for those who have not yet been born again. I pray for those whose eyes have not yet opened to the problem-solving strategy that they can overcome God. Father God, we know the race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. Oh, Father God, but for those who can endure. Father, I pray now that you will give your people an encouraging and a spirit of a finisher. Let them become a finisher in the name of Jesus. Father, your word declare, he who begun a good work in us is able to bring it to completion. We ask it now, God. We invoke the finishing spirit to finish his work in us in jesus name amen amen
joy, such a joy to know the Lord. To lift up his name every day. For me, I just want to continue to serve him for the rest of my life. The longer, the longer we study the word of God, the longer we put his word into practice, the more precious victory we will see in our lives. He sent his word. The word of God is the strategy of God to deliver, to save, to rescue. Let me say that again. The wisdom of God is the strategy of God, is the power of God to save, to rescue, to deliver. Let us use it effectively. Let us use it skillfully. Let us use it truthfully. And watch it deliver you. Let us start to see result. Let us see result. Start to put it in, into practice. And you will see result. Let me say good morning to each and every one out there. In Radio Land, you are listening to Choice Gospel Network 92.9 FM. This is Bishop Anderson. We are located at 411 Lefferts Avenue between Brooklyn and New York Avenue. What you need is the strategy of God effectively in your life. Operating effectively in your life to change your position. And my friend, it will take place through the power of God. That's what we believe in, teaching the strategy of God, revealing the power of God, the mystery of God through his word, that you may have victory. And I want to remind you that no weapon formed against us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And remember, war start in the mouth. War start in the mouth. It start in the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart. Come on, so what you speak? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, my prayer for you this morning, let us grow in the wisdom of God. Let us grow. Let me say good morning to all friends, all well-wishers, supporters of Finding the Lost Sheep Center. Don't forget to check me out on the website, lightofrevelation.com. Yes, go to my website. See what we are doing in the community. See what we are doing. How we are impacting lives. How we are transforming life through the strategy, through the wisdom of Almighty God. Believe me, it works. It works. Oh, come on. If I ask for my 
let me say good morning to my pastor pastor roberts good morning to all kbs family good morning to all god's people good morning glory to god we just want to thank god and to all our students at finding the lost sheep center bible class and college and whatsoever glory to god the institution of wisdom we welcome you Yes, my friend, it is time. It is time that we come out of our problem. It's our situation. God sent his word. Listen to those words. Psalm 107, verse 19 and 20. He sent his word to what? To rescue. So the strategy of God fully in operation will deliver you, will save you, will rescue you. Man, this is a powerful truth. The wisdom of God guaranteed to rescue you. What strategy are you using? What are your strategy to overcome your situation? And God knows we all do. And I think that's maybe even bold face to say we all do because some people don't think they have a problem. But the truth is we all have problems. We all have trials and tribulation. How are you going to overcome it? Well, I'm looking to God who is the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm trusting in his wisdom that when he reveals something to me, I'm going to immediately, suddenly, at once, without any objection to put his, what he revealed to me into practice. Show me me, God, in the name of Jesus. It is now 9.54 and remember I only have a few more minutes here. I pray that what I share with you this morning, I pray that it bless you. I pray that it will keep you. I pray that it will sustain you. Remember, it's not my will, but thy will be done, great Jesus. Oh, hallelujah.
yes, don't forget we are located um, for any prior requests, anything, any question, any suggestion that you may have for me. I pray that you will call me at 718 493 9095. That's 718 493 9095. I'll be there in about 10 15 minutes, you know, and I will answer. Pray, you know, just give me a call, whatever. I pray that our program has been a blessing. I pray the teaching may be enlightening, it, it may be informative enough to transform, to challenge to change, to bring victory into your life. And don't forget, we are located at 411 Lefferts Avenue between Brooklyn and New York Avenue. Amen. So we're looking forward, if you don't have a church home um, and you want to visit us, you are free. It is open to the public. We are located at 411 Lefferts Avenue between Brooklyn and New York Avenue. Our telephone number there is 718 Four nine three nine zero nine five. That's seven one eight four nine three nine zero nine five. That's seven one eight four nine three nine zero nine five. This is Bishop Anderson saying so long. Remember, may the peace of God, may the wisdom of God, may the understanding of God continue to protect, guide, bless, and deliver, rescue you from every circumstances, every every situation that you are in. Remember, just. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. And if you have not given your life to the Lord yet, if you have not given your life to the Lord yet, I would like to in, um, for you to call me. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. 718-493-9095. Yes, my friend, call me. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Remember, I can't call you because I don't know your number. I gave you mine. So please give me a call. Bishop Anderson saying so long. May God bless you. May God keep you. It is now 9.59 in the Big Apple. God bless you until again. God bless you. Yes.